Next, ค่ะ um, uh, as we mentioned before that um, Thailand um, starting uh, social value community since 2017 officially. It'll be the first of our workshop. We right now have like thousand participants joining our, our our network, our movement, and also in the policy level um, in research innovation. Uh, right now, university or research kind of um, required to uh, access their impact from their research and academic, right? And um, not just only academic, but also in SMEs. Right now, it's um, going to, uh, say, the recognition program or the award, embedded in the award for the factory, in the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Award for the factory in Ministry of um, Industrial. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so many factories are now aware of and interesting to use SRI, SRI to uh, access their impact. Mm -hmm. In another part, if in government, in state enterprise, the enterprise also promoting SRI in uh, a state-owned enterprise, fifty state-owned enterprise in Thailand, and and in terms of private sector. For Asian or Thailand DJs, I require uh, them to uh, disclose that social impact measurement in, in their report. Mm -hmm. So a, a few years that we have been developing this uh, social impact uh, ecosystem, social impact framework in Thailand. Uh, Dr. Sandeep, huh? what would you see? What would you see the challenging in Thailand and um, the say, difficulty in um, uh, doing or running a sound like share with us? Yeah, um, I think the first challenge is about the um, SRI in Thailand is about um, how to, I, I think because now nowadays in most business are going to follow the SDG um, goals uh, from the UN and then to try to enhance their social value and the impact to the society, even their other business. They're not only making only a profit, but they try to help um, the society better. So because um, this is like um, a theme of the uh, nowadays business, so that that I think most business or even the social uh, the state enterprise, um, they try to make more impact to the society as well. So this is um, uh, they try to find how to measure the social value. And nowadays, because we have a tool for the SRI. So I think this is a very useful and helpful for them to, um, to help them create the social value. But the challenge um, that I, I found that for, for measuring the SRI in Thailand is about the database and about the uh, um, yeah, accuracy of the um, evaluation process that they always mention. But, but today I got new idea because when, when I listen from the, um, the specialists from the other countries and we not only focus on the, the accuracy of the, the number, but I think there are many aspects or dimension that we should concern when we use a SRI tool. But, but for make them more feel, feel better about the accuracy, so in my project that I have done is about, I try to collect the data and try to set up like a portal of the, um, the, the database of the indicators, because that when, when we measure an outcomes and there are many indicators, so they always ask me about how we measure it. Okay, I'm going to try to change the slide. <laughs> okay. This is um this is my project that I'm I'm, I'm this is on, on the process because I try to collect all uh, many data. This is the data from the Social Value Inter International. I like um correct the report uh, as much as I can. It's about one hundred and twenty reports that are credited by the Social Value International, and I try to um make them in the category in many activity like. Um, some project for disability for elder or for children, and then um, this data I collect from um, many countries like in UK, in Taiwan, as um, Kim Sekun keep mentioned about that the SRI report in Taiwan has have a lot. Okay, and this is about I try to collect the data like the SRI because 
many organizations always yes. ask me, yes. and also you as well, yes. uh, how, how much of the SRI could be, should be, should be yeah. and we, we try to find the benchmark for them, okay? But actually, I, I try to persuade them that actually it's not comparable because it depends on the activity and the context of the business. But um, to, make, to make them more feel, feeling better, I try to collect this data about the, um, there are the range of the SRY, okay, about 77 projects from 120 that are, yeah, more than half that SRY is about one to five, okay? And the average of the 90, uh, about 19% uh, of the project that in the children and youth and families, the SRI on the average is about 3.64, okay? So this could be like a guideline, just a guideline, but yeah, yeah, just a guideline for them. Or, and the average of the SRI about 5.1 to 10, um, this is about 15% uh, of the project is um, focusing on the children and youth and families, and the average is about 7.3, something like this. This is on process of my research, not, not finished yet, but I try to um, present for you. And for the project that can create the SRI more than 10 times, um, it's about 15%. Okay, it's about, uh, no, it's about 15 projects um, from the 120 projects, okay? And um, the, uh, the most uh, is about 20% of the art and music and culture, recreation and support, they create about 15, an average of 15.01, something like this. This is a, about how to um, average the SRI as a benchmark for the other project. I also um, try to collect the data, but, but not in this slide, about um, the indicators of the outcome, because normally we, we always have some question about how we measure this social value because it's not economic value. Most people are very familiar with the economic value and easy to measure, but for the social value, sometimes it's difficult. So I try to collect like a database or the portal that they can pick up um, like a tools for them to apply, not use directly, because as I mentioned, um, the SRI cannot like use, uh, because they are different in different contexts. So we have to apply for it. Just give them an idea. So this is a search that I'm doing in my research. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very great. And um, it's kind of um, our collaboration we like this uh, research to be published into, into, in, in Thailand, in Thai as well. So you guys are gonna have like a bunch of indicator, a bunch of um, valuation. How can we uh, evaluate the confidence, how we can evaluate the self-esteem, something like that, we can have the idea to apply in your SRI. So we're coming to the end of our session. Um, anyone have a question or not? If, if not, um, Adam, Terence, and Mark, any final um, message, any final word you'd like to give to us before we... Um, yeah, I, I would uh, I would like to finish by saying it's great to see, as we've said, you know, all of the developments that are happening, and uh, I completely understand the need or the the desire for sort of reliable data. And, and Dr. Santi's work is really interesting. I look forward to le learning more about it. Um, but you know, I'm I'm left with my favourite phrase that we use a lot within the movement of enough precision for the decision, uh, and I think with uh, Terence has, you know, really timely reminder about risk. So, you know, if we see a high SROI, there's probably a significant level of risk that that is not realized compared to perhaps some of the lower ones. So I think building that dimension in is, is really, really crucial. But also just, you know, not to scare people sometimes that we don't need scientific levels of rigor to be able to do SROI. If you're a, a small enterprise, a small charity, a small social enterprise, then quite often, you know, enough precision for the decision does not mean scientific levels and, and it's good enough as long as it helps you manage impacts and improve people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, 
Yes. Thanks, Adam, for uh, the comment about um, return and risk. So it echo my presentation. Uh, I also use the analogy um, from the um, you know the finance sector when you talk about the stock market, the stock price. Um, in the stock market, you will also calculate something like the PE ratio. So each stock has a PE ratio. Some stocks has higher PE ratio, and some stocks have lower PE ratio. So normally, we, we won't just directly compare to the PE ratio. We will say um, in the same industry, in the same categories, the company, um, they're similar in nature. Then maybe we could compare the PE ratio. So um, it's very good that um, uh, the analysis of the SR report that shows that um, what's the range of the SR ratio. But we, we should always, uh, in addition to thinking about risk, we should also think about the specific context and specific industry of the uh, operator included in the SR report so that um, at the end of the day, we, we do want to make comparison, but we need to be very careful, very cautious in making um, uh, those comparison. And uh, finally, I um, uh, think um, uh, in, uh, for, Bank, uh, for Thailand, for Taiwan, and for Hong Kong, we are all new in this space. So we need a lot of peer learning. So um, I uh, eagerly anticipate more uh, opportunity to share uh, research information so that we could progress, uh, our society can progress uh, side by side, uh, and, and we could use some um, social impact, we could do social impact in reporting, and also we, we and uh, more importantly, we need, we need to do better in um, managing our impact using um, the SRI principles and the IMP framework. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Professor Mark? Oh, no, I have no comment. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's good to learn from each other and uh, hopefully we can meet in front, you know, face to face next year in Bangkok, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hopefully we can hold a conference here in Bangkok next year. Thank you everyone for, uh, for great leadership to move forward our society. So um, let's join together and continue to uh, work together to build back better future together. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you again. See you again. Thank you. Thank you.